So I just finished listening to my audiobook. Uh, it was called The Wisdom of Your Cells by Dr. Bruce Lipton. And in this, while making many points, the main objective of it was talking about how we are all inextricably, con inextricably connected. We are all organisms that have advanced over time over what he calls fractal fractal in, fractal imaging or uh, fractal mutations how you make an example of cutting up a lime in half then taking that half and cutting that in half and so on and so on and as you do that the lime keeps on getting bigger so you keep splitting it and splitting it and splitting it so the point of this video today the religion and Darwin principle here that I want to talk to you about is the fact that I'm not opposed to religion. I think it's a good thing to keep your spirits up, um, to give you a good principles, a good uh, line of principles or guidelines to live by. But the issue that I have with religion and what Bruce Lipton also talked about and brought to my attention and made me think was the fact that most religions tend to imply or teach that human beings are above or higher than the rest of the living biosphere or other living things here on earth. That we are somehow more We have more rights as far as being able to live. I'm not going to go too deep into that today. You all can uh, discuss that and ask me questions on the comments below because then I can answer those questions with more videos. Anyways, so being that religions, some, tend to teach that human beings are higher or above other living organisms, um, with the fact that um, human beings are separate entities that are fighting for survival, meaning that we must do anything and everything to make sure that we have enough money to look out for ourselves. And basically what this entire audiobook program spoke, touched me on or spoke to me about was the fact that we are all inextricably inextricably connected. I'm having a hard time with that word. Inextricably. Anyways, whatever. Connected to each other. We all came as a single organism, and that organism over time divided, 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 and, and became more well, more than one organism, of course. That's how we are. We are more than one organism. We're millions of organisms put together to be one human being organism, just on a larger scale. So in my belief, the entire biosphere, or the entire earth layer which we all reside on, from the sky all the way down to the depths of the earth or soil, are all equal. And instead of having that mindset that we are above all of the other living organisms, we are somehow superior because we've created all of this wonderful, all this wonderful stuff that we love to have and keep. Instead, we should all try, I, I believe, we should all try and work with our environment. Again, Dr. Bruce Lipton, in this book, The Biology of Your Cells, talks about how we need to go through, we are going through this evolution of change now. That our environment is now changing. We are going from, and this is funny because it also relates to the Icarus deception, which I've also listened to, um, that says we are moving out of the industrial age and into a compassionate um mammal-like stage. Uh, nurturing is what he said. It, it's a nurturing mammal-like stage. Going from the reptilian 
or um, industrial age into the nurturing mammal age. So no longer are big corporations ruling the world. They're slowly starting to fall. If you notice, you know, we've had to uh, bail out a lot of big companies over the last five years. And so we're looking at trying to come together and work together. I believe we should not be struggling to survive at the expense of other living beings, whether it's human beings, plants, other animals, it's just not worth it. Because the Earth, planet Earth itself, is an organism. And it is my belief that if we do not work in synchrony with all other living organisms on this planet, then this planet is going to get rid of that cancer. So we're looking at what Dr. Bruce Lipton calls the sixth mass extinction. Now, if we don't change, and I have the full belief that we can, and I think that we will, get overcome this sixth math, mass extinction because we have the ability to do that. And as organisms from this planet, we should be able to adapt like we always have been against Darwinian theory to the changing times, which means you kind of have to step out of that industrial machine-like way of doing things and become a nurturer. Be compassionate, even when it's hard. Try and take a step back. And breathe. Again, with my exercise videos, I like to stress the point of breathing in through your nose, deep into the belly here, like a baby. You see babies or toddlers walking around. They don't have <gasps> sucked in tight abs. Their bellies protrude a little bit. It's soft in the belly. They're able to breathe in there. They haven't learned all those neurotic holding patterns or the stress mode of, <gasps> ah, I got to take time to breathe. And I know sometimes it can be hard because I myself am in quite a uh, stressful income earning job right now. So I'm in that field just as much as any of you may be right now where the stress is high and you don't always have the time, the time to take a moment and breathe but you must. It is the only way that you can clear your head and be able to make rational decisions. Because without that, you become very neurotic. You say things you don't mean. And that nervous, angry, negative energy is given off to other people and it becomes a disease. And I ask myself, like you're probably asking yourself right now, like, what do I do to change? How, how am I going to do this? And, you know, if you're saying it's we're still in the industrial age. There's all these companies running things, and that's how you work and earn a living. Well, how do we change? It's one step at a time. I share these ideas with you. You share my ideas remixed into your own way, but with the same base message, which is working together. It's all about working together, as I'm starting to learn. All these audiobooks that I'm reading, they seem to have the same thing in common. That yes, we are going through a huge change right now. A... Um, A spiritual evolution, if you want to call it that. Our, the humankind is going through another wave of evolution where we are no longer in, in an industrialized phase. It's really cool, and I go on and on and on about this, but Dr. Bruce Lipton in this audiobook also talks about the 
the types of steps and patterns that mankind has gone through in these millions of years of evolution in relation to the types of animals and their progression in, in, in life. So thousands of years ago we were living all civilizations were right on the coast, like on the water, the amphibian stage, or the, I'm sorry, the, the fish-like stage. So we were conquering new, new lands, going years, spending months or maybe years across the sea trying to find new land in our boats. We were, we were water explorers. We live by the water. We needed water to survive. We had to be right by it. Then we came into our amphibious stage where we were able to, we found agriculture and we were able to go away from the coast and go inland and be able to drill down and find water and use that water and, and make our own food instead of living by the ocean and living by the sea. We were able to provide for ourselves and become more amphibious, water and then mainland without any huge body of water, you know, right next to us. Then came the aviation stage. We became like birds, and we were, f and that was during the the uh, Wright brothers stage. We that brought us into a whole new world of being able to be on the other on the other side of the planet, and just you know, in about a day or so, instead of years, instead of months or years, traveling by boat. It changed us enormously. Then we came into the what we're still in and changing out of the reptilian phase. You know, you have reptiles like like an alligator that are very clicky. They're very mechanical like their tongue that kind of clicks in and out. They they snap their jaws and their eyes. They're very mechanical like the industrial revolution. Big businesses. And like the cell. These businesses all started off as very small businesses, turned into corporations that were bigger, and then into huge, you know, mono, monopolistic entities that have what I have learned outgrown. They have no control over what, you know, over what's going on now. They're for taking an example of the like a little lizard that you find, you know, on your front porch when it's a sunny day, and then a dinosaur back in the dinosaur age. Two same organisms, same nerve cells, same sized brain, huge body in the dinosaur. It had evolved over time to become this huge body or big business, but the brain, the the control center of the business, or the brain in in the in the uh, rep reptile is the same. So eventually when the dinosaurs died, it was because their environment changed, but their brains didn't. It couldn't control the body and adapt to that environment. So it died off. The dinosaurs died off, but the lizards stayed around because their body was still, it was a still a small business. Everything was more in touch. The brain matched the size of the body. So what I'm trying to get at here and to wrap this up, I want to keep this less than 15 minutes is to put into perspective here and to debunk Darwinium's random um, survival of the fittest or uh, survival of the fittest due to uh, random chances and happenings of evolution of people and things. No. As Lamarck put and what Dar and what Darwin actually received a lot of his information off of Mr. Lamarck, and I quote him, organisms and their environment are in a are in a lockstep interaction. And evolution is fractal in nature. And I invite you every day, and there's something to work on, is to try and help each other out. Be part of the big picture. There's lots of videos out there of people helping people. The uh, um, hope for <laughs> there's still hope for humanity type of stuff. I'm inviting you to do that. 
This is part of that wellness. Start thinking. Uh, develop your mental and emotional strength here. I'll do a few videos on, on physical strength, but right now I personally am going through a mental, emotional uh, strengthening phase. So I want to share that with you as, I, as I'm on this journey. And I feel like this is pretty prevalent, especially these books that I'm reading. So to wrap this up, I'll put a little bit of um, physical conditioning um, piece in here for you some uh, motivation. If you can, at some point during the day, preferably in the morning before you eat anything, go for a walk, at least 30 minutes, ideally an hour. I love the Audible book. One of my mentors that I really enjoy watching and that I, I get a lot of inspiration from, Elliot Hulse, also does this. Walk in the morning for about from 30 minutes to an hour and listen to your audiobook. Audible is a app you can download on your phone. Plug in those headphones, go for a walk, you're learning and exercising at the same time, and you're burning fat. Okay? That's something that I took directly from Elliot Hulse. But it seems to work. That little thing right there will get you more fit. You have something in your arsenal now that I just told you about becoming mentally stronger and helping the greater good of this world and this community. As Dr. as Mr. Paul Check says, we are all one, we are all love. Let's show that to each other, even when it may be hard. Peace.